Hey, g'day, and welcome back to Steve's Tesla. It's three months now since I have the Powerwall 3 installed. In this video, I want to share with you my experiences of the different operational modes for the Powerwall 3. These are self-powered mode, time-based mode, going off-grid, and charging the car on excess solar. I'm testing each mode to see if I can finally reduce my grid consumption down to zero. So far, I'm getting some promising results. My power bill has gone from $336 for a three-month period before I got the power wall to $150 once I had the power wall installed, and it's now down to $28 for one month. Then my plan is to see if I can join a virtual power plant, VPP, and sell my surplus electricity to further justify the expense of the power wall 3. So I recommend you subscribe now, so that you don't miss any future updates. So let's start with a quick recap. Take a look at my earlier video called Justifying the Cost of a Home Battery. There's a link at the end of this video. Since I've changed to the AGL EV Nightsaver plan, which required the installation of a smart meter, I've been able to see my consumption data for the first time. The AGL app shows you your grid consumption and your solar generation in both quantities and dollar cost, although there is a frustrating two-day lag in getting that information to the app. Seeing this data for the first time made me realise that my solar generation of electricity was actually costing me money. Take a look at that video, but effectively there is a lost opportunity cost with the surplus electricity that I generate from my 6.5 kilowatts of solar panels. I have to sell my surplus during the day for only 5 cents per kilowatt hour, as that's the feed-in tariff, because I can't store it. I buy that same electricity back at night for 31 cents per kilowatt hour. This just doesn't make any sense to me. If I were generating huge volumes of excess electricity, the feed-in tariff would cancel out a larger part of my consumption. But with only a 6.5 kilowatt solar unit, the best I can get on a hot summer's day is about 5 kilowatts of output. It is also really likely that at some point soon, feed-in tariffs will go negative. What does that mean? That means that people like us generating surplus solar electricity will have to pay to send it to the grid. So let's get started. In the settings menu of the Tesla Powerwall 3 app, I can look at the operational modes and select my preference. There is self-powered mode, where you use the stored energy to power your home after the sun goes down. And really, the entire house is being run from your Powerwall 3 with the grid as a backup. If you need more energy, the other option is time-based control, where you pull energy from the Powerwall 3 at times when your energy plan is charging you the higher peak rate. The other two operating modes comprise going off-grid completely, where you are in self-powered mode, but there is absolutely no grid connection as a backup. Also, within the Tesla Car app, you have the opportunity to charge only from excess solar. This way, the Tesla car does not put any drain on your Powerwall 3. The car will only charge when there is excess solar beyond what is needed for your house and to charge the Powerwall 3. I have been surprised also to see that the Tesla Powerwall has saved me from experiencing several power outages in the last three months. Typically in the area where I live, we have a very stable power supply and we may get a 20 minute power outage maybe once a year. The Powerwall 3 instantaneously switches over to battery backup in the event of a power outage. I hadn't realised it, but there have in fact been eight very short power outages in the three months since I've had the Powerwall installed. These only last for one to two minutes and the switchover is so fast, it's virtually instantaneous, it's so fast that the microwave oven clock hasn't even got time to reset to zero. One thing that I have realised is that the output from my solar panels varies considerably. I live in an apartment block and I'm restricted to a 6.5 kilowatt solar array as we have shared space on our apartment roof. And this is the maximum that I could install. 
During the summer months on a bright sunny day, this is more than enough to charge the battery from empty to full by about 11 o'clock in the morning. For the rest of the day I'm generating excess solar energy and it's an ideal time to plug my Tesla car in and charge on excess solar. What I have realised also is that on grey cloudy days the solar output can reduce down to just three or four hundred watts which is only just enough to run my house and leaves very little to recharge the Powerwall 3. So if I have extended periods of several days of grey overcast weather I do not generate enough solar power to recharge the Powerwall 3. What this tells me is that during the winter months output could be down by say 50%. There will be very little opportunity to charge the car using excess solar. I am expecting to have to use grid electricity during the winter months. My Tesla Model Y is my biggest and hungriest electrical appliance. It draws a significant power load when it's charging. However, as my driving profile is very similar to the vast majority of drivers in that it's unusual for me to do more than 100 kilometers in a single day, I've never found the need to install a fast charger in my garage. So I use the standard 230 volt 10 amp 3 pin power outlet for charging my Tesla Model Y. The AGL EV Nightsaver plan charges me a fee of 8 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity consumption between midnight and 6 a.m. During the day it's 31 cents per kilowatt hour. So if I'm unable to put sufficient charge into my Tesla Model Y using excess solar during the day, I will plug it in at night and set the schedule so that it charges from midnight to 6 a.m. And this will easily add one or two hundred kilometers of range at the off-peak rate. Well, what have I learned and what are the results? In self-powered mode, everything in the house runs off the Tesla Powerwall 3 battery. The 13.5 kilowatt hours is sufficient for a typical house such as mine, where I have set aside 20% of the battery capacity as an emergency backup reserve. So during the morning, the battery will fully charge. I can then use the excess solar for the rest of the day to charge the car. In the evening and during the night, the Tesla Powerwall 3 powers the house. It can readily handle high energy loads when I'm cooking something for dinner or running the clothes dryer or the dishwasher. But of course, some of those appliances you can simply run during the day when you have excess solar. However, as soon as you plug in the Tesla Model Y, the Powerwall 3 fairly quickly discharges all of its available energy into the car. So after only a few hours, the Powerwall 3 can very well be down to its 20% emergency reserve. It's like having a jerry can of EV fuel in your garage. The offset, of course, is that your battery is then depleted and your house will be running on mains electricity for the rest of the night. So in self-powered mode, if I can avoid plugging in the Tesla Model Y, the Powerwall 3 will easily run the house all the way through the evening and the night. The house only consumes one or two hundred watts during the night for appliances such as my television on standby and my refrigerator. If I really need to charge the car for use the next day, I'll schedule the Tesla Model Y to start charging from midnight when I'm only being charged eight cents per kilowatt hour on the AGL EV Nightsaver plan. In self-powered mode, I have been able to get my grid electricity consumption to zero as long as I don't charge the car at home or if I do it's only when I'm generating sufficient surplus solar electricity. Time-based control is when the Powerwall 3 is set up to feed the house at times of high energy prices. You adjust the settings within the Tesla Powerwall 3 app to tell the software the price you are paying for your grid connection during the day, which is your peak usage. You also set the price you are paying for your electricity during the off-peak period, which in my case is from midnight to 6am. So when this is in operation, the house is self-powered from the Tesla Powerwall 3 and it will only use the grid after midnight. It's self-powered for the rest of the time.
In time-based mode, I have not been able to get my grid utilisation down all the way to zero. As the Powerwall 3 is driving the house for 18 hours during the peak, it needs to draw off the grid from time to time if the solar output is reduced due to the weather or if energy demands are high. In off-grid mode, it's like self-powered mode but with no grid backup, so you are literally running disconnected from the grid. It's a software disconnect, not a physical disconnect. To run in off-grid mode, you need to be able to generate sufficient solar during the day to charge the Powerwall 3, which I know I can do during clear summer days. When the sun sets, you run your whole house from the Powerwall 3 with no grid backup. In my particular case, to be able to make this work, I can see that I will need a much larger solar array, as 6.5 kilowatts is plenty for summer, but it's useless on a cloudy day or when there are several cloudy days because the battery won't fully charge. Also, to make off-grid work for me, I can see that I would need more than one Powerwall 3. There is an expansion package coming for the Powerwall 3 and I might investigate this in the future, but I can see that a single Powerwall 3 will be good for one or two days but some of the darker, colder winter months when the solar panels are generating at their lowest I can see I will need multiple Powerwall 3s to run my entire house non-stop. The charge on solar mode is a facility within the Tesla car app that integrates nicely with the Powerwall 3 software. It will allow you to select an amount of base charge that your Tesla car will receive from any source and then set an amount of how much of the car charging you want to be from excess solar only. This does give you the potential to have a completely solar powered vehicle and household, providing you have sufficient solar panels and enough battery capacity to run your household as well as allowing the solar panels to charge your Tesla car. Stormwatch mode is not an operational mode, but it is a feature that you can set up on your Powerwall 3. This then monitors weather forecasts for storm activity in your region. If there is a storm pending, it will charge the Powerwall 3 from any available power source up to 100% in anticipation of the storm and the potential for power outages. With this feature activated, you know that you have up to 100% of the entire battery available should you have a power outage as a result of forecast storm activity. This could give me up to 24 hours of self-sufficiency if needed. Occasionally calibration mode kicks in where the Powerwall 3 will discharge completely to zero and then recharge from all available sources back to 100%. This is a little alarming when it happens for the first time. It's recalibrating for better battery performance in the long term. It has happened twice in the three months that I've had the Powerwall 3 operational. So there you have it. Self-powered mode and using excess solar to charge my Tesla is the best way for me to keep my grid utilisation to near zero. If I make no changes, the Tesla Powerwall 3 will have paid for itself in about 10 years. However, the opportunity to join a virtual power plant and sell back some of my excess energy at times of peak demand can reduce that payback period quite significantly. So be sure to subscribe for future updates and thanks for watching. Cheers. G'day and welcome to Steve's Tesla. This is my channel dedicated to electric vehicles and renewable energy. Subscribe now and let's drive.